do social media platforms and state authorities act to counter disinformation and hate speech online? Is this done while protecting and promoting freedom of expression? This has been the subject of a UNESCO research conducted since 2021 as part of the project Social Media for Peace, supported by the European Union. Among the results of this global research conducted so far in three pilot countries. First, harmful content spread on social media does also affect the offline world. For instance, reinforcing pre-existing tensions and affecting vulnerable communities. In Bosnia and Herzegovina, the research found that coordinated inauthentic behaviours are not correctly identified by social media platforms, thereby preventing civil society's efforts to reduce the circulation of inter-ethnic hate speech. Second, although social media platforms moderate content through both AI and human moderators, they are missing important signals which are only detectable with local expertise and knowledge of local languages. In Kenya, research found that Meta only moderates content in English and Swahili, despite over 60 languages being spoken in the country, while harmful content is mainly targeting communities speaking minority languages. Third, existing legal frameworks for addressing harmful content online are not always fit for purpose or in line with international standards. The right to freedom of expression is sometimes chilled by very broad definition of prohibited criminal content. In such context, social media companies are removing content nationally deemed as illegal at the request of authorities in order to avoid penalties ranging from fines to sanctions that can go as far as terminating access to the platforms. Based on this research, UNESCO released a set of recommendations to enhance transparency, promote equality and freedom of expression, and avoid online censorship. Among the recommendations, states are urged to use legislation to promote transparency of platforms, to provide judicial assistance as well as restorative mechanisms to vulnerable communities and to develop media and information literacy programs. Social media platforms are urged to ensure transparency and to establish content moderation in diverse languages, to prioritise conflict-prone countries where allocating financial and human resources for moderation and to provide fast and effective complaint mechanisms for vulnerable groups. But not only does the project Social Media for Peace provide recommendations, it also initiates their implementation. In our pilot countries, UNESCO is supporting the creation of national multi-stakeholder coalitions on content moderation and freedom of expression. It empowers local fact-checkers to improve fact-checking in minority languages. It empowers civil society organisations to debunk disinformation ahead of elections or to curb online hate speech. It builds capacity of CSOs to use social media for spreading peace-building narratives and MIL messages. Curbing online harmful content while ensuring respect for online freedom of expression requires collective and concerted efforts. By bringing together all relevant stakeholders at national level, UNESCO works towards increased adherence to international standards on freedom of expression and human rights.